Welcome to Jam Sessions, backstage at Nova Scotia Music Week 2021. We are here interviewing today Pillow Fight, and I am Andrew from Andrew's Alcove and the Second Button Podcast, and with me is a co-host of Jam Sessions, Darcy Walsh. Hello, everyone. So, Pillow Fight is a transfronted alt-pop band from Halifax, formed by Art Ross and Aaron Green over texting voice memos back and forth in 2020. Influenced by Phoebe Bridgers and Snail Mail, Pillow Fight uses conventional, matter-of-fact lyrics over intricate arrangements and lush dynamics. The duo's differing musical approaches perfectly... <laughs> Tongue-tied for some yeah, compliments. Gonna, I think Jeff can probably edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> the duo's differing musical approaches perfectly complement each other, producing sweet yet biting songs about transitioning queer love and mental health. Following the success of their first single, Playing the Fool, the band is in production for their first full-length due in 2022. So thank you for coming today. Uh, we have uh, Art Ross and Aaron Green. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having us. So uh, as Andrew read in the intro bio there, uh, you had the Playing the Fool single was out just not that long ago. It's yeah. it, just back in April. April, yep. And you got a lot of radio play out of that, I believe. I know I, I was aware of you guys from that single oh. probably through maybe East Coast Countdown or something. Nice. Like, it might have been Could in the be. ranking there at one and, point. And uh, the CBC East Coast, Bill Roach, okay. debuted it for us too, which was great. And, of course, it, you had mentioned uh, when I saw you perform earlier this weekend too, the, the clown makeup <laughs> circulated <laughs> around in social media and everything. It was... Yeah, it's kind of our brand now. Like, um, yeah, accidentally a friend... iconic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our friends now wear like this like – um, pillow fight like logo which is the clown makeup but we never chose that it kind of just happened yeah and it was nice yeah. is the uh, artwork that I've been seeing around on some of like the stickers and everything is that mm -hmm. stuff that you guys are doing personally or is it like a friend of the band or um, uh, Megan Green Abracazebra Productions okay does, uh, they're a tattoo artist and also a graphic designer oh, yeah. cool. and they've been working in the music industry for a while they're also my spouse oh well, <laughs> handy to have yeah it's good yeah. To, it's good to have creative partners right at home so they uh, Art and Megan work on all the branding and visuals together okay. to yeah. create that they really make us look good the well it really stuck out to me like you can Thanks. see it like it's it's good branding because it's not sticking out like a, just a band name over and over again which is yeah. great and i see it everywhere but it was unique so it really did stick yeah, out. yeah i feel cool. like people like lost their minds being like your posters aren't a rectangle yeah. There's something else? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I guess Sometimes it the simplest thing is the most effective <laughs> thing where it's like, because I, Megan had this idea and our, like, we've had the, the teardrop. Our, mm -hmm. our video coming is quite centered around tears and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but Megan had this idea and Art was like, yeah, we could use this. And I was the whole time, I was kind of skeptical, but I don't say anything because I'm the sound person. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're Shot the visual. Aaron. Yeah. Like I don't, okay. like they don't come in and be like, is that bass a little? So we have a good agreement. Um, but I was a little skeptical until I saw it and I was like, wow, that was fantastic. I didn't, good I personally didn't think a show poster could be anything but a rectangle, right. but you've convinced me. Yeah. Go. <laughs> no, it's it, it very effective. So, uh. You did mention that you have a follow-up single coming out shortly. We when does it actually... Like, I I got to hear it while you were performing, <laughs> but uh, when is it being officially released? Uh, the end of November. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, Alkali is coming out in the end of November. We have a great music video um, that I'm so excited to, to launch. Um, uh, someone else who's on kind of the Pillow Fight team, uh, Shannon Long, uh, animated it. Oh. So we're so excited. I feel like that's kind of part of our brand where we're like trying, we're just kind of experimenting and trying different things and like trying to be a little bit different, but trying to bring the, the art to it, despite it being your name already. If you will. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Alkali, I think is going to be a game changer for us because a lot of people think that, you know, we're only like playing the fool slow, like almost like a power ballad, but Alkali's got some pep. Yeah, that's what, when I saw it, I was excited to hear because you had mentioned that it was coming. And then when I saw you perform, I'm like, oh, wow, they're going a completely different route yeah. with this one. Like, and it's very good. And you had an awesome 
backup support there. Oh, you guys we are, are so lucky to have those. Yeah. Everyone play with us <laughs> and make time because all of them play in yep. so many yep. they different were, Every one of them things. was a name. Like, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. And they, um, they're just, they're all such kind people and they all really like our music. And I feel mm-hmm. like we didn't even really need to persuade them. We were like, do you, can you come play? And I think we foster this really beautiful uh supportive uh band where you know everyone yeah, there's a community forming yeah. within this whole group too that you can see like there's a lot of artists that like yeah. well aaron is one of them that's in a hundred different bands i mean really and like he's the og and so you're starting to see that you guys are all socializing together and, and like yep. the bands that know the bands there's a real like yeah. there's a scene happening again it's which so is true. really exciting me and andrew we're actually talking about that quite a bit this week it's, i assume it's very exciting was it like that last time though like this is my first uh, music week so i, don't I know. wasn't here and i assume that it's mm-hmm. always yeah been a l- little like that okay. but i'm noticing it just in general even outside of the music week oh. that th- there seems to be something it seems like covid kind of was like a pressure cooker and now people are starting <laughs> to go out and all of a sudden everyone's like well while i was home yeah i was making content would you like to hear what i did and everyone's like i would love to because <laughs> so i starved. can't make it i yeah. haven't seen anything new yeah the resurgence awesome. of live music we didn't have for over a year, really, Whoa. right? Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Well, that's what we got so much work done because we couldn't do anything. Exactly. Oh my gosh, yeah. And we would just, because I was so used to like, just, I was a guitar for hire for mm-hmm. like yeah. five years before that. So it'd be rehearsals and touring and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, God. and then it all got shut down. And I realized I hadn't been, because I had been a side person. Or yeah. creating. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've been helping contribute to other people's music and wasn't really. Not that I wasn't doing music, but I wasn't, if no one asked me, mm-hmm. I wasn't doing it because there wasn't a whole lot of time for that. And then in March, everything was just like, bump, done. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, oh, I need to figure out how to do stuff. And luckily, Art and I had just had our first little like jam because we, we knew each other for about six months before that. Sure. Like that. I don't know. There was no, we didn't like build a relationship yet. It was just like, do you want to get together and get high and write a song? Um, but honestly, I feel like. I know it's very privileged to say, but I feel like um, Pillow Fate was kind of, it spawned out of having so much time in quarantine Mm -hmm. where like we just tried not to watch so much TV and instead we would like get to each other's house. We were in each other's bubbles. So like, it's not like we could hang out with anyone else. And then we just like, we would sit down, you know, smoke some weed, have a beer and then crank out like four songs. Yeah. And we were like, what is this? This, like, I've never had this happen before, but, like, when you meet someone who's almost, like, your, like, music partner, Mm -hmm. you're like, well, that makes sense. This is what it's meant to feel like. It's not, like, work. It's just there's an even flow. It's so easy. We had no goals when we started. Like, we weren't (laughs) even sure if there would ever be a live show ever again. Like, is this Armageddon? We might as well, right? So um, it actually just turned out, like, I I was so so busy touring that when that stopped i was like well i guess i should learn how to produce isn't that the next Mm -hmm. logical thing so and i already had like experience from being in the studio but it was really the first time i took the opportunity to be like okay i'm gonna sit down with logic i'm gonna learn about this and uh we work with john mullane um from in flight safety who does Mm -hmm. a lot of our mixing and helps with production he's been a really great mentor for me as a baby producer too Mm -hmm. but we had all that time where you know i'd just be like oh art i had this idea to send a voice memo over and then i'd be like write some words and then when we can finally like okay okay be together but sometimes Aaron would send me a voice clip at like 3 a.m yeah <laughs> like high off his mind and i'd be like i'd wake up in the morning i'm a teacher so i get up quite early and i'd listen to it and it'd be like and i'm like Aaron, we can't use this <laughs> yeah. we, this is not a pillow fight song it's but. good to reel me in with some pop sense. <laughs> yeah. like, Check out this six solo. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, no. I was with the loop pedal for about an hour <laughs> last night. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So nice. before, like, usually with these, we'll go back and kind of follow an individual artist from where they started and everything. Nice. And, I mean, there's a ton of stuff I could talk to both of you about. <laughs> but as far as Pillow Fight itself... Yeah. That is a fairly recent thing. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like it is a pandemic baby itself. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, 
I am aware. I'm going to be a little selfish with this part of the Please. interview, just because I know we have a time constraint. So, I know a lot about Aaron now. Yeah. And for Art, I was curious before this. Yes. Were you a music journalist? Did I, is that? <laughs> Where did you hear that? Is that true? I went to music journalism school. Okay. So like, I do some weird deep dives, and some of it I'm okay. not sure about, and I don't always bring it up. But I wanted I love to ask that. you that because it totally relates to what we're doing here today honestly i think so like um in all honesty i thought i feel like it's maybe on my linkedin or something but um it is that's my fan that, yeah. <laughs> so um i grew up in england and i actually really wanted to be a musician when i was younger but my mm -hmm. parents were like go to university do something musicy but like at least have Practical. a degree yeah i get it so i did music journalism school but i actually realized that i didn't want to be a journalist i just wanted to be a rock star so i um I quit the school and then I moved to Canada and then I did a woman's studies degree and I kind of just realized that music probably was never going to happen for me. Um, and I kind of just put it back in my pocket and I was like, you know what, I'm going to do some open mics and like, I'll still like write a few songs, but I just didn't see it for my life anymore. And then when Aaron came around, it was like, something was like ignited again and I was into music again. And I, it's 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 like it's that whole cliche of like that dream actually could happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is like you know i feel like in our in our capitalist lives it's like you got to go make some money like go be a teacher go be a whatever but we're actually trying to make it happen we're trying to make our like our artistry our music into something mm -hmm. which is so cool and it's so rare to have a lot of people are like math teachers for like you know, for years instead of actually doing what know, they want to do what they, they want to yeah. do. It's nice to be able to find something that you're like, even yeah. like this podcast is not my job. I make no money on this. <laughs> I, I'm just here because I like doing it. Like yeah. it's really enjoyable. Like, you know, at the yeah. end of the day, I'm not looking for something to reduce stress. I, exactly. I had a good day. <laughs> sure. So, yeah. Well, you saw how big our band was. Our yeah. expenses are. <laughs> so we're doing it for the love of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot. Uh, I'm sure a yeah. lot of the bands here are in that. Uh, yeah, but you guys had a lot of people up there. So we you, really did. I think a lot of people are just like they were quite surprised. I heard after, um, people were like, "I was surprised that you were good, but I was also surprised that you were funny." Oh, and really? I'm, yeah. And I'm like, well, we're not, we look serious and sad in our like publicity and our like PR, but we actually are quite, um, I don't know, light, funny yep. people. Um, so it was kind of nice to like actually show the world who we are yeah. Yeah. instead of yeah, just no, like what great. they see on social media. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's no. also like art's optimism because they're a baby musician. Like I've been kicking yeah. around playing guitar <laughs> doing this. Been rung yeah. out a couple of times by the music biz, so it's nice for me. To, uh, they then optimism injection, yeah. Or, yeah. And just yep. everything is such a like. Ooh, this is so exciting! <laughs> I'm so like, excited! I guess it is exciting. Why am I not? Excited? Yes, I yeah. should be. there was a time when I was excited by this too. So it's nice refresher. It's true. And yeah, yeah, so for kind of to that point for yourself, Aaron, then you've performed with everyone in Nova Scotia at some point. A lot point. of people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of stages. <laughs> Uh, there's when the podcast started, uh, Andrew and I were not directly involved at the time, and it was a lot of Picto County musicians. Mm -hmm. And there are those couple that they, they if you look on stage at a local yeah. show, they're there somewhere, right? At every show with every band, like there, there's a yeah. couple of them that have been around, but I know Aaron and Tori, who we're not yeah. interviewing this weekend, but I. I, I've identified there's two of you right there for mm -hmm. sure. And she was out with you guys the other day. Uh, Tori Cameron, what an absolute Yeah, babe. I like, I like to take Tori everywhere. I, yeah. Uh, Tori's a genius and just like so the great to purest work with. harmony vocals and such yep. a stage presence. And, mm. and Tori and I have been like touring buddies for years and years now. And, yeah. and I've seen with you guys are the other half of the Town Heroes when they're... A quartet? Yeah. I've seen that before. And um, I, Tori has a band with uh, her sister Barb. We just played last night upstairs. Did, did you play with I them? I play lead guitar See, with that's them what when I mean. that happens. So, uh, <laughs> and Hello Delaware. Hello Delaware, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's, 
Mm. It's been a lot of uh, a lot of gigs. I've learned a lot of things. I've been around, which has been a fun offset. Like I was saying, how I enjoy arts, like enthusiasm and mm-hmm. just like freshness. But I can also be like, okay, so now when we do this show, this thing's probably going to happen. And look out for this, and don't worry about this. If it yeah. like, so we ha- kind of have that where <laughs> I'm jaded, but I have all the backstory, and you have the enthusiasm. So we it'll be like that really well. It'll be like. There's a man in the parking lot in a van, and he says that he has like a record label contract for us. I'm gonna go get in the van, and Aaron will be like, "Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't." Get in but there. I've seen candy. it before. <laughs> he has a tray of candy. Yeah, <laughs> gotta go. Yeah, yeah it, it comes across, and I mean nice. that's some of the dynamics. There's been a couple of different people in and out for helping with the podcast, and yeah. then with Andrew, it's. You guys obviously have seen me because I've been bugging art for over a week now every time. <laughs> see Please you guys. do. So I, I can see everyone out here, the mm-hmm. community out here, and I'm starting to be able to do the same kind of thing where I'm like, hey, this is who this is. And yeah. Point everyone out. Yeah. So I do see that kind of dynamic with you guys where you get the best of both worlds going on. Absolutely. You get the, it's not old. It's very fresh. But <laughs> it's the new just optimism it's 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 nice yep. to see and i'm thinking i'm going to see a lot of both of you around in the next few years uh, i hope so i'm I, hoping this I, yeah. is a, going to be like a full album and maybe a little tour. we're working on a we're working on a full length for next year it's it's in, it's we did a lot of demos over covid like mm-hmm. we, i think we wrote like 30 songs over the quarantine yeah. lockdown kind of thing and i wrote about 50 riffs no songs no songs oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a whole catalog of riffs <laughs> that's the best thing about having a lyricist is yeah. that it just like naturally becomes a, a song so a lot of those demos now and since we're self produced um it's like wow i only need to slap some actual drums on this put finished vocals on and like because you worked on the yeah. demo so hard because there was nowhere to go, nothing to do. You've completely exhausted Netflix. And uh, yeah. you're like, well, I'm just going to go play guitar for six hours tonight. And and uh, going back through that stuff as we finalized stuff, I was like, wow, this was like... And the technology available is so mm-hmm. great. Sure. Even when we couldn't see people, I could shoot the drummer, the tracks, and he'd record in his space, send it back to me. i do the editing, fire it off to someone to mix, and they... And then you're just on like Facebook chat doing all the notes or, you know, you can Skype in with someone and talk yeah. about it. If this happened in the 90s, we wouldn't have had the same. That, that's why I'm finding it really interesting just as a fan to see. Like I've watched scenes come and go yeah. in my lifetime and it's always fascinated me. And mm-hmm. it makes you really nostalgic, which is why I got involved with this in the first place. Because oh. they were interviewing musicians from home that are still playing or don't play and oh. doing history and everything. Yep. but. The emerging artists right now in Nova Scotia, especially, it's phenomenal. Like we got oh, every great. single genre going, and yep. everyone's got their own little unique spin on it. Mm-hmm. Like you can see things where you can see where their influences come from, but yeah, it, there's a total art vibe to the whole thing. Like nice. it's it's just a little bit better than what we used to see for the whole DIY, but. Mm-hmm. Like there's a professional feel to all of it, but when I'm getting to know everyone, everyone is doing it themselves. Technology's yeah. exi- just got to that point where mm-hmm. the artists that are expressing themselves here can yeah. do it on their own. They don't have to have everyone else involved. Absolutely, so the barrier to entry isn't involved. there as bad as it was. Yeah, it's yeah. not that, and like thousands of dollars in studio time yeah. and all that kind right. of stuff. And like now, it's like if we need a studio, it's for something particular, and that's one part of it. But like. A lot of the stuff gets done in my pajamas surrounded by cats and the right. and then art can come over and we can just like lay something down in the mm-hmm. and the technology is so good and everything we're using and it's so easy to figure out how to use everything. Like, oh I'm having this problem I'll just punch the first few words into Google and there's 17 videos being like, Oh, I had that problem too. Yeah. Do, yeah. do all this. And we're also surrounded by so many people like uh, Tori did backing vocals on playing the fool. Like mm-hmm. we have such a, I have such a great bank of friends and mm-hmm. musicians that uh, things I can't do. It's like, well, just, Oh, do you want to come do this? Do you want to come do this? And everyone's so great that we can just, and now it's lovely to actually be able to have people over to do stuff yes. and, yeah. and go over. And we've been working with Pat Murphy on drums too. And that's okay. become really fun because he has his drum set up and I can just kind of go over and plug my laptop in and we're good to go. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's, it's, I, I, I've, 
I've been around for a bit, so I do remember when studio was kind of the key thing and the price barriers around that. And yeah, absolutely. making music at a per hour rate. Yeah. Yeah. Which was always hard. Like every With the schedule note, time, like you create now. <laughs> yeah. You've got an eight hour day to get all this. And whereas now I just like pick away at it until I'm happy. And we work with people on more of a project scope instead of an hourly. Mm hmm. And it's really allows for a lot more experimentation, a lot more conversations. So, yeah, it's been really fun. <laughs> so um, one thing that I did want to ask um, where you had mentioned the trans friend at alt pop uh -huh. band, and we briefly talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. So I will, I'll let you talk about that in a minute here. But sure. another thing as far as the release schedule for these, we don't know it yet, but I believe next week not this week okay. coming not this week coming the week after i think is transgender awareness week mm. um so yeah i can have it that this is the first episode of that week that'd be great yeah, just in recognition but i'll let you talk because i only know so much on the topic <laughs> so I'll, I'll let you kind of drive that part of the conversation for me okay um do you want me to just talk about um being trans in a band yeah and why you would put that it out in front for people uh -huh. as opposed to, I mean, this is not an ignorant part, um, but most people, if they're like cis gender, sure. don't announce it. Right. <laughs> right. Cause so, why would you have yeah, to? But I mean, right. yeah. So I just, I, I some of our listeners don't, necessarily have exposure to that sure. but we've covered all the topics before and everything i know we have very open-minded people of that course. are on the other end listening to this so yeah. i thought it might be a good opportunity for you to kind of speak to some of those people and educate them on how that's important to you but of it's course your own comfort level and yeah place. yeah i mean i'm always the first one to talk about how gay and trans i am mm -hmm. i think it's like it's kind of like an outspoken thing i put aaron in a dress all the time just for photo shoots not anything weird just i've noticed shoots. the makeup players on stage weird. too so. i mean to be honest that's all him i mean aaron does love a bit of uh makeup look at your it gems the other day yeah, that was, was nice it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um so i think for us it was really important to be a lgbtq plus type of band mm -hmm. um it's so ingrained in my uh you know, individuality and my pers personality in my songs and my lyrics. And so we couldn't shy away from it. Like, nope. I don't know how any musician doesn't put their full selves into, you know, their music, their, their band. Um, and so I feel like there's that vulnerability that I think people really love. Mm -hmm. And especially we found that um, because we are so vulnerable, um, about being transfronted and having a non-binary person in the band, um, we've had such an incredible um, reaction from the community where, you know, we have we have kids, you know, 15-year-old kids that are, like, loving our music, saying that we are, like, you know, they really appreciate what we're talking about. And it's really nice to see trans people doing great stuff in music. Um, and then it's also, it makes for great conversations like this mm -hmm. because yes, we're not necessarily a political band, but we have a political backing because I am inherently a political person. So it is more, like I said, I didn't want to make assumptions here, but yeah. so it's about representation and, Partially. and like, yeah, you're speaking from that level. Like it said in the bio mm -hmm. confessional matter of fact. Lyrics. Exactly. Like you guys are speaking from the heart when Absolutely. everything's being and it put out there. So it kind of it like, exactly. It kind of um, it makes me feel a little uncomfortable when artists, for whatever reason, don't put out their um, you know that kind of part of their life because sure. it's like in our in our lyrics, especially like something like Alkali, our next single. Alkali was written in the in the second day of a breakup when I was like crying my butt off at my, my, at my kitchen table. And I was talking to my partner about breaking up with another partner, something it's like this modern yeah. day story, you know how it is. <laughs> um, but it's that like, kind of like very raw, um, emotion that I think is not, it should be present in 
music. And not only do we put it in um, in the recording, but as you can see on stage, we are like raw, we are real, we are authentic. I feel like that's how I connect with people as an artist. And luckily, Aaron helps me like back it up with really good production. Mm-hmm. And, like it sounds good. It sounds so tight. It's all built right into the context of what you're exactly. trying to accomplish with a song. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And like for us, like Aaron is like such an, an incredible ally. Just he, he, he's a cis guy, but he completely supports everything that I do. Mm-hmm. And he completely, you know, he's in the, he's on the, in the ride with me. You know, if I ever get, um, misgendered or someone uses the wrong pronouns for me, he will always stand up for me and um, he'll never shy away from, you know, being openly in a gay trans band. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. It's really nice to have this duo. Um, but other than that, like there's other queer and trans bands out there, especially in Halifax. Like it's a very oh, we, we, gay city. When mm-hmm. we had uh, Kim and Katie on, we yeah. got into this too. There like with, with them identifying as a lesbian band early yeah. on. It was all, all, all the early material. That's what it said. Right? Absolutely. So it was very, very similar to what's happening here. That's why I wanted to right. check with you before, but make sure that we talked about it. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm glad that you brought it up. But you mentioned like the 15 year olds enjoying it and it's good to the next generation can see it is okay to be me whereas when we grew up it wasn't okay to be you it just wasn't right and i found like you're saying when we grew up i'm a little bit older than her imagine (laughs) all the great music we miss because people didn't feel comfortable being in front of as themselves and it is a shame like because i know myself like i I can honestly say I've been fairly open-minded my whole life, but I can honestly say the same as anyone. I'm sure Aaron and I are on the same page. But if you think back through your whole life, there's times when you had ignorant things that were taught to you that you just yeah. didn't know. And as you got older, you were better with that as far as internal thought processes. But totally. you know that at some point you were misinformed about how to mm-hmm. look at something. But I feel us yeah. watching the progression since mid 90s when we were teenagers yeah to now yeah it's so much easier for a 15 16 year old now to it's, yeah not, oh, a, oh not a perfect world but that's what i'm saying there's a lot of positivity around a lot here. Of a lot progress of, yeah. a lot of people are like it's okay to be yourself nowadays like it is I mean, in general there's a lot there's still yeah. jerks out there but like even like unfortunately even in something in a space like music week that is so incredible and mm-hmm. kind and supportive I still have to deal with transphobia. I still have to deal with misogyny. Like, regardless of where I go, even if it's the best, coolest place, I'm still going to have a tiny thread of something like Mm -hmm. that. So, like, yes, I hope that people are nice. Mm -hmm. But I hope that our band at least sparks a conversation and is like, hey, this band is really good. And they're trans. What? Like, that's yeah, cool to have both. It, and it's really good to hear that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saddened to hear that there is any issue. Because as somebody in my position, I am fully aware of the privilege I have that mm-hmm. I can walk around here oblivious yeah. to the ignorance. Because nobody's going to talk to me about it. Well, yeah. Because why, why would they stop <laughs> me and say, hey, I have some not popular opinions to share? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. I, I mean, to be honest, like, I think people want to be their best selves. But again, the privilege, it's like, and you it's can't so predict it. Yeah. For yeah. people to not necessarily, like, a lot of stuff that until it gets broken down, people don't even, wouldn't even realize that, yeah. that uh, something like yeah. discussing, discussing stuff with my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, who yeah. lives in a very small town and who's been Catholic and everything. Yeah, it's and a lot different than your buddy that you went to high school exactly, with. Exactly, yeah. and, like, the trying to, well, all my friends are queer and, like, explaining pronouns and how things work on, on sexuality spectrums and gender spectrums to my 67-year-old mother is, uh, and she wants to learn, but mm-hmm. still has so many things ingrained that she doesn't even think about. And I'm like, mom, that's not, you need to say this, or this needs to be gender neutral, or this person is. Mm -hmm. And uh, even, even though she really tries very hard, there's still some things that happen where you're like, Oh, that's, uh, we'll talk about that. But it's, it's the only way to, 
fix it is to have conversations about it and be completely open. Yeah, as long as people yeah. are willing to have the conversations, I mean, it can be painful sometimes, but as long as they're willing to have a conversation and there's a dialogue, yeah. you can at least meet somewhere in the middle so that they're trying to understand. Like that, That's true. That's the I spent some time with our 90-year-old, we're brothers, I think we mentioned that, but yeah. our, our 90-year-old grandmother, um, huh. I had to take her for an appointment, so I was with her for the full day, and she brought it up herself i started asking hey. questions she goes i saw this on tv and and we talked for like an hour and she has the questions and she wants to understand that's and i'm like beautiful. that's fantastic yeah. right yeah that's so nice for, yeah i think um going on that i it's really cool there's a i mean definitely a bit of pressure sometimes like it's really cool to have cis gender straight people at our shows and wonder if i'm a boy or a girl that's mm -hmm. really cool and then, like, they could maybe look at us and be like, this is a cool band. I don't really know what's going on, but there's a charm in that. There's, like, a, a, a curiosity and hopefully, like, a positive impact on it. So, like, I hope that someone, you know, other trans bands can help your grandmother yeah. at least <laughs> know that there's options out there. Yeah, yeah. You know? exactly. Well, yeah. also, in, like, for for my part in the in the thing like art was mentioning dressing me up putting me in makeup for all the photo shoots it's there's a part where like masculinity is a bunch of bullshit lately mm -hmm. and well, it's getting better but still to be like you can you can still be a dude wear a dress be soft sing songs about mm -hmm. being sad do all the yeah exactly yeah, thank you. my That's appointment so cool. got canceled right before was so, so I, was, I was so sad i was gonna get new nails for this oh, but no. uh, my nail tech was had of had the flu and uh usually i <laughs> He lives with his. So oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that's like also something that needs to be like dealt with, even if it isn't in terms of a, of a gender yeah. um, spectrum. Just also, you can be on any part of any spectrum and be you and that's all fine. And there's yeah. nothing anyone else can dictate that you're a man because you do this and like yeah. being able to have that, like you can be a dude and be super soft and mm -hmm. that's fine. And that's a lot of stuff, again, coming from a small town, small rural place. And like, Yeah, I'm uh, finding that seems yeah. to be a common theme, too. Like, we're from mm -hmm. a small town. Most of the people are here. Like, everyone says Halifax, but everyone's really yeah. from a small town, and they're now in Halifax. Yeah. So sure. everyone has that same kind of common vibe. So it is Absolutely. cool to see that there's been some obvious progression in that stuff. Like, really it's no, we're not so. there, but yeah. there's a lot of yeah. cool people around that yeah. don't care either way or they're very supportive Absolutely. like and it does seem like the it's more of a minority the people that yeah. have something negative to share and they're kind That's of being true. pushed on the back burner a little bit they're not <laughs> they're not they're not getting the microphone as often as they exactly used to, so. and half of those people are busy fighting scientists right now over yeah. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, have a, they have a big youtube and facebook posting schedule yeah. they need to maintain yeah, yeah, exactly. very busy if we if you see bands like us right now i just feel so hopeful for the future mm -hmm. i just think like this music week there's like you know four i think there's four plus trans bands or bands yeah. you know bands that are like trans affiliated whatever um and then i think what about next year what are you going to find what's going to happen to the future it's i feel like it's only only going to get more representative more um open mm -hmm. i'm so excited about kind of growing with this awesome upward trajectory Absolutely. Yeah. and it's interesting to talk to the kids who don't give a shit all yeah. the young kids like this <laughs> yeah. stuff is now being ingrained from very very young ages there's no lines drawn there's no delineation well, and that's like, why i put the caveat at the beginning there's one in, in in the in the room and she she's just always been taught that like, and, and i'm not even there. saying that yeah. because i'm her father like school and everything yeah yeah the general message now is that, like, no, it's not cool to be a jerk. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's just the same as you. Yeah. yeah. So, just be nice, love who you love, and you all of, be yourself. Yeah, <laughs> a nice. lot of promise for the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. Do you have any, like, I know that you have the new single coming out, so yes. the listeners will be checking that out too. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any performances coming up, like in December, Yon? Um, not till the new year. Okay. We're uh, going back to finish our EP Excellent. after this is done. So I'm going to be spending some time in the studio for the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. And then in the new year, we'll have, we're going to be busy in the new year. Perfect. Well, I can't we'll announce specifics sure. yet, but mm -hmm. there is a plan to be 
all over the place yeah. and very visible. So well, we'll make sure that we help contribute in our little way too. Thank, Thank you uh, so much for having us. And speaking of being visible, where can we find you online? Oh, you can find us. Uh, I think Instagram is probably our, your best bet. Instagram pillow dot fight um, f i t e. Um, we post um, really um, moody black and white photos. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can also see that we're funny too. I promise. And Perfect. you can get no, to all our stuff through the Instagram. We're still we're still brand new. We're working on the website. We're just it's babies. The, we're just babies. It's only <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that'll be great. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We look forward to hearing more in the future. Left my house, you hair on my sheets. But your cars were pulled over knee. Couldn't breathe in amongst the crowd. Just in case our heartbeats too loud. Sunside, lucky I would. Sunside, I'm still understood. Sun tide, knocking on wood. Sun tide, I'm still understood. I know it's not the fashion to feel this way to start. And the claws get their scratch on.